Hi, I'm Matt Pike, a sound designer and composer. In this series of tutorials, I'll show you some of the ins and outs of the Polybrute, Arturia's new six voice morphing analog polysynth. In this episode of the series, I'll take you through the powerful synth voice architecture at its core to explore what sets it apart from other analog polysynths available and the incredible range of timbres and moods it can create. Polybrute's voice architecture features two VCOs, noise, two filters, three envelopes, and three LFOs for each of the six voices of Polyphony. Let's begin with the two newly designed voltage-controlled Brute oscillators. These multi-waveform oscillators are configured to allow quick generation of really unique sounds. Both oscillators have independent tune controls, and they behave slightly differently. VCO1 is two octaves up and down, quantized to semitones. VCO2 is defined by its settings menu, but by default, it's a fine tune with seven semitones up, seven semitones down. The oscillators are based on three waveforms, saw, triangle, and square, which can be blended with these two crossfader knobs. The first crossfader blends continuously from saw to triangle. The second crossfader then blends the output of the saw triangle blend with the square waveform. This square waveform also has its own pulse width control. which goes the whole way to closed and basically gives us silence. From here, the features and behavior of VCO1 and VCO2 differ, allowing for more interesting variety and versatility. VCO1 features the metalizer, the wavefolder design which is at the heart of the brute synth range and its sound. By default, this is assigned to the triangle wave and it folds the peaks of the waveform adding brighter harmonics that will be familiar to any fans of West Coast Synthesis. This is a very dramatic control which can range from subtle bright enhancement to harsh destructive textures. VCO1 also features a continuous hard sync with VCO2 as the source. VCO2 replaces the metalizer with a sine wave sub oscillator. By default, this crossfades away the waveform blend from the two crossfaders. VCO2 also provides linear frequency modulation from the output of the waveform mix, including the sub, over VCO1. This cross modulation can be tuned to be subtle in the first half of the control and be pushed for more brutal effects. As we're dealing with analog oscillators, the pitch can drift when dramatic FM settings are used, but we can control this using the sync on oscillator one to keep the pitches stable and musical when playing polyphonically. We also have a glide knob, which is applied to both VCOs, just to the left of the FM knob. It also works polyphonically.
Lastly, we have the noise generator, which has a continuous color parameter, which filters the noise, allowing for more subtle and flexible use in patches. When we combine all these different oscillator features, we can find a huge range of timbres ready to sculpt with the rest of the voice architecture, whether you're looking for thick classic waveform blends or unique modern sounds. Additional oscillator options are available in the settings area. We'll cover those in a dedicated settings episode. Polybrute's mixer seems pretty simple on the surface with volume knobs for the output of each oscillator and the noise generator. Under the surface, however, there is more going on here as these mixer levels are VCAs, which can be modulated via the matrix or the morphing controls, the same as all the rest of the panel controls. This opens up a lot of creative options. Here's an example with each level control being modulated by a different LFO. The other trick up the mixer's sleeve are the filter routing switches, which allow each source to be sent to the input of either the Steiner Parker filter or the ladder filter, or both simultaneously. This allows us a lot of flexibility in sound design, especially if the filters are set to parallel. Here is the same patch, but with the two VCOs routed into separate filters and the noise routed into both, with the Steiner in high pass and the ladder in low pass. The filter routing can also be morphed between parts A and B. For example, here is just a simple saw wave getting morphed between the two filters with drastically different settings. Watch the lights and just see the behavior change. The flexibility of this routing and the modulation abilities make the mixer a surprisingly creative tool in sound design. Opening up the ability to create separation and layering in patches or refine your filtering and harmonic balance. Let's move on to the voltage controlled filters. The Polybrew uses two unique designs for each filter, each offering a very different set of features and character. Filter 1 is a Steiner Parker filter, similar to those found in the rest of the Brute range. It has a 12 dB per octave slope and is a multi-mode filter, which can continuously blend from low pass to high pass to band pass, with a notch in between the low pass and the high pass modes. The other defining feature of this filter is the brute factor control. This uses a feedback loop to drastically change the character of the filter, producing screaming resonances and sometimes unstable frequency responses. The second filter is Arturia's take on the 24 dB per octave ladder filter. This filter has a smoother resonance and provides a fatter filtering style we'll all be familiar with. The ladder filter also has an output distortion which pushes the filter into its VCA. 
This can be used to add more subtle mid-range harmonics to create stronger, more upfront timbres. It becomes much more noticeable at higher resonance settings, as the peaks, which are normally quite clean and polite, become much more aggressive and acidic. The keen-eyed among you may have noticed the filter FM controls in the oscillator section I didn't mention earlier. Each of these controls affects a different filter. The first is VCO2 to the Steiner filter. This is a great way of adding some buzzy character to a filtered sound. And actually, if you switch the source to VCO1 and detune, you can get some really weird movements going on. The second filter FM control is noise to the ladder filter. This is a great way to remove some stability from that resonance on the ladder filter and also just get a little bit of texture into the patch. The noise color control really, really comes into its own here. Back in the ladder filter section, we also find the filter routing control. This determines whether the two filters are routed in series, Steiner into ladder, or parallel, both straight out into the final BCA and effects. These different routing options open up a lot of possibilities for sound design. For instance, when routing in series, you could use the high pass of the Steiner into the low pass of the ladder for very flexible bandpass filtering. At high resonances, this can even produce formant-like tones. This mode also allows us to use the more brutal characteristics of the Steiner filter and then tame them with the ladder. When in parallel, the filters can play off each other to create layered effects from even simple waveforms. In this case, just a single saw wave. We also have individual output and level controls for each filter when in parallel, which can be modulated in the same manner as the mixer, which can help you create even more defined layers. For example, here is that exact same patch, but with some LFOs on the VCAs. To help make controlling these two filters quick and intuitive while performing, there is the large master cutoff knob, which any Matrix Brute users will recognize. This opens and closes both filters at the same time and can also be modulated to save time when creating new patches. Here is that formant example using both filters from earlier with the master cutoff knob. You can always quickly get back to a zero value on the master cutoff knob by pressing and holding the left arrow key and turning the master cutoff knob. Just be sure not to let go of the button before turning the knob. Last of all, we have the key track control, which determines how much the cutoff frequencies of both filters will change based on the notes that you play. This is centered around the middle E, and it has loads of uses in sound design, from creating definition between bass and lead notes and also tying the filter positions to the notes themselves so you can kind of get a more natural timbral sculpting. For instance, here's a fairly basic polyphonic keys patch without key tracking and with key tracking. Notice how much the cutoff changes feel more natural when we add the key tracking.
The filters can both self-oscillate, however only the ladder can track pitch reasonably accurately while doing so, to the point where this preset is based around only a self-oscillating filter as its source. Let's move on to the modulation section of the voice architecture. We have three envelopes available. The first is the VCF envelope, which is sent to both filters via the VCF envelope amount knobs in each filter section. These knobs are bipolar, meaning we can open or close the filter with the envelope. It is a typical four stage envelope with attack, decay, sustain, and release stages. Attack can be as fast as two milliseconds and the decay and release as long as 18 seconds. So there's a really wide range covered here. The second envelope is the VCA envelope, which controls the overall volume of the synth voice after both filters before sending it to the effects. Both filter and VCA envelopes have velocity sliders, which vary the level at which the envelope is sent by the strength of the note played. This is a fundamental tool in creating expressive and playable synth patches, so it's great that it's so easily available. Here is a soft keys patch with and without velocity on the envelopes. The modulation envelope is not linked to anything in the voice architecture. It must be assigned via the modulation matrix. You can also assign the VCF envelope via here. The other key difference with this envelope is that it doesn't have the velocity control. Instead, we have a delay stage. This just pushes back when the envelope starts, meaning that we can create nice delayed reactions to maybe separate out a movement from the attack of a sound or create really slow evolving pads. Here is that last FM pluck sound with the mod envelope mapped to filter envelope sustain. So we can create a kind of reverse when the notes are held. The settings menu gives even more flexibility over the envelope curves and their various velocity and loop modes. Again, we'll go through this in the episode dedicated to the settings. Polybrute also has three LFOs. LFO 1 and 2 are both fixed waveform LFOs, which can be synced or unsynced to BPM. The unsynced mode covers a huge time range, and the synced rate will always be shown on the screen when it's changed. The waveforms featured in both are sine, triangle, square, ramp down, ramp up, random, and smooth random. The LFOs also have different retrigger modes. Mono synchronizes the LFO across all the voices so they move in unison and sound like a monophonic LFO. Holly offsets the start phase of the LFO for each voice, so they create kind of overlapping modulations but with consistently the same dispersion between each voice. Poly Retrig re-triggers each voice's LFO every time you play a note, which can create really musical overlaps. I'll use a ramp down LFO here to make the difference really nice and clear. LFO 1 and 2 each have a unique feature. LFO 1 has a phase knob which adjusts the point in the cycle of the LFO wave that the LFO triggers. This can be a great way of getting different grooves out of how a note hits when played or how the two LFOs play off each other. LFO 
LFO2 has a fade control, which is an attack time over the amount of LFO2. It's a classic way to get that delayed vibrato sound. LFO3 takes a very different approach to 1 and 2. While it has some common features, like being able to be synced or unsynced, it's designed to allow continuous modulatable control over the wave shape. Symmetry warps the LFO waveform from ramp down through triangle to ramp up while remaining a consistent speed. Curve can then be used to make the wave more or less percussive. Retrig switches the LFO between being monophonic, as we've just been hearing, or polyphonic by implementing the same poly retriggering we found in LFO 1 and 2. Single changes the LFO into an envelope by only playing one cycle. This combined with the curve is a fantastic way of shaping transients for percussive sounds. The final button on LFO3 is times LFO1. This is a great shortcut for getting deeper modulation out of a patch by multiplying the output of LFO3 by LFO1. This not only changes the output level of LFO3, but sometimes also flips its polarity. Here is that same simple sound we've been using so far, but times LFO1. As with almost everything on the Polybrute, there are more customizations and tweaks available for all three LFOs in the settings menus. There are numerous ways in which we can use Polybrute's six voices. In the top left, we can switch between three polyphony modes. The poly mode allows for all six voices to be triggered by all notes independently. The unison mode stacks the voices onto a single note. And the mono mode plays just one voice your classic basses and leads. Polybrute also has three timbrality modes, which change how the voices are triggered, stacked, and morphed. Single, layer, and split. Here's what they do. In single mode, the Polybrute is monotumbral, playing the same sound on all the voices with a morph control morphing between parts A and B. Layer mode stacks two voices per note played. One of these voices will always play part A, and the second voice will play the morph position between A and B. And split divides the keypad into two zones, the lower one always playing part A, and the upper one playing the morph of part A or B, in this case, B. To choose a split point, just hold the timbrality key and press a key on the keyboard. If you also hold the timbrality key and press the octave up or down buttons, you can transpose the lower split and if we hold it down and press the polyphony button, we can change from poly to unison or mono only for that bottom part of the keyboard. Finally, we have the stereo control. This distributes the six voices of the polybrute in the stereo field in a way that's really, really satisfying. Modulating the stereo image of a sound is an amazing tool in sound design, and we have several ways to do this on the Polybrute. 
we can modulate the stereo knob as a destination, which will spread the voices from narrow to wide. This is quite a subtle modulation destination. However, we have some hidden modulation destinations in the matrix, including several different panning destinations. The first is voice pan, which pans the master VCA on the output of both filters, whether they're in serial or parallel. We also have pan settings for the outputs of the individual filters. This means we can set the filters to parallel and actually have them playing off each other in the stereo space. This can get really, really cool modern movement going on in a sound. I'll cover the hidden modulation destinations and how to access them in more detail in the next video in the series. All right, that's it for this episode. Make sure to check out the next one where we cover the modulation matrix, the key that unlocks all the potential this synth voice has to offer. Thanks for watching and check out the links down below for more info.